Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea, yeah, welcome to Cooking Tea. you and Walter Winchell. Yeah, so well, I got a little something extra here today I want to show you. It's my handy dandy, uh, this is the food police. Come out with your hams in the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's also got some other things, you know, now if, if, if Miss, the very lovely Miss Doris gets out of hand, I have an alarm. <laughs> That's a Doris alarm. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, well, oh, I'll just keep this on standby just in case. I was afraid. I of that. need it <laughs> <laughs> to project your already booming voice. Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, let's get the witch in here and see what we're doing today. And here she comes. Boink. Well, she kind of a rough take. I think off it's your turn to office. read the right. witch letter. Did well, you hear a whistle when yes, she went through? Yes, I did. She whistles at us. <laughs> well, let's see. Dear gentlemen, I live in Canada where we watch your show on satellite. I have never been in the southern United States, and I must admit that many of your recipes are rather quaint. Hmm. Hmm. I am writing to ask about a dessert you once mentioned on the show, a cobbler. Is it a cake shaped like one of the paving bricks on old streets, or perhaps a nail of the same name? Please show us Dumb letter, huh? who are not up on your southern lingo. Truly yours, Bertha Shoemaker, <laughs> Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Oh, my heavens, Moose Jaw. Moose Jaw. We haven't gotten a letter of Moose Jaw since uh, I don't remember. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, uh, it's funny that uh, she would ask. It yep. was, was a she, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> can't remember. Bertha, I guess it was. I'm doing something called Apple Macaroon, sent in by the lovely Santa Morris of Bear, Delaware. Bear, Delaware. Bear, Delaware. And I'm doing a recipe from Ava Presley <laughs> of Norton, Virginia. Oh, I love it. Uh huh. Great name. And uh, Ava, I didn't realize until I was making this recipe a little while ago that we probably did this 12 or 15 years ago on this show oh, as one of the secret recipes from the Bly family. That's right. And the lovely Doris will be doing holiday apple cobbler. Oh, so. She'll be in shortly. Well, we got cobblers today. Do you want to now start? Now leaving from gate number seven to Danville, Virginia. <laughs> Oh, he is such a well, mess no, when he no, just no, has to play. I got to do a couple of quick things. Well, wait till my Billy Bob teeth arrive. Uh -huh. I've just ordered some Billy Bob teeth. They're going to kill you, folks. They're wonderful. But they're a little pricey. You know, those gag gift catalogs charge too much for stuff. Well, of course they do. First thing, this thing calls for an incredible amount of stuff. And it, it makes a huge cobbler. First thing I got to do real quick, and then I'll let you get on your All way, right. is two and a third or a half. I can't remember a third. I think it is. <laughs> Uh, sticks of margarine or butter, and we're going to go with a little combination of both today. Although well, it looks to me like you got two and two thirds cup. Well, it's it's something like that. Well, it'll we, just be a little extra. It's greasy. just a little extra. <laughs> and besides, uh, now Miss Doris has already laid into me, laid me out thoroughly before we went on the air. She says this is terrible stuff to use in baking. It should only be used as a spread. Hmm. Well, next thing I got to do is take some Granny Smith's or some kind of apple that's close to it and uh, do about 13 of them, which is a big old bag about this big, mm -hmm. big lumpy bag about this big. And because it takes so many, I've already done a goodly number of them already. And uh, all you do is you cut them into the same size of snits uh, that you use in a pie. And that's about oh, that bit. Uh huh. That's a snit. I've an apple. Heard, I've an never apple heard snit. That. That's what they called them where I came from. And you know I'm from Winchester, near Winchester, which is the eastern apple capital of the world. And so I know a little bit about apples, <laughs> but not much. I know, for instance, that this is the peeling that I'm taking off right now. And you, essentially, you quarter them and take out the little thing in the middle, that little ugly thing there in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm heating my margarine and I'm snitting my apples. <laughs> I'll swear, I think this boy sometimes, that pumpkin head of his, was cloned from an apple tree. <laughs> snip. So anyway, now, snip. I have lived here in the Roanoke Valley where we have a number of fine orchards, and in all of my life, which is longer than yours, considerably, uh, 
I have never heard that word snit used in relationship to an apple. I have heard it many times in, <laughs> in its uh, regular like, use, uh, being he, in he one. had a terrible snit mm -hmm. and hit her upside the head. Well, anyway. Let's well, I'll tell you, I'll be happy to look it up for you, but it's one of those terms I grew up with, okay. an apple snit. If All right. anybody out there has ever heard of it, let us know. Yeah, let, we'd love to know that. All right, I've got a cup of flour, self-rising variety. Make sure you're using the self-rising now. Cup of flour and a cup of sugar. And in the oven, I have a, an eight by eight pan. You can use whatever you want um, with a stick of margarine in it melting. Oh, now I've got the flour. Well, there, oh. getting so rough there. Uh, <laughs> And you want to mix the flour and sugar together. No one will miss that one apple I All just right. threw away. Right. <laughs> Was it bad? No, uh, I, I had uh, chopped it all up into pieces and forgot to uh, <clears throat> to uh, take the uh, peel off of it. So anyway, yeah, yeah. that's I, okay. I guess the snake is going to come out here in a few minutes and <laughs> tell you to take a bite of that. Now, you know, there used to be, a, didn't you the one that told me that there used to be a contest to see who could get the longest yeah, peel and, yeah. and all that? Okay. I was just waiting. What did you win if you had the longest peel? Well, probably a good grade from your instructor because they did it mostly in those schools. In schools? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I've got my flour, and now I've got to add to this a cup of milk. So let me get that out of the refrigerator. Well, I am now peeling the last oh, of my apples. It? What? Where's oh, the refrigerator? Oh, he's lost here. the refrigerator. No, Ladies no, and gentlemen, no, he's forgot where, where the refrigerator is. is. And... Uh, this milk is cheap. I just want everybody to know that Laban and Larry just took a rare trip together. We haven't done that in years to Washington, D.C., and after two days, we're still being speaking lovely, to speaking another. to one another. In fact, we had a wonderful time, didn't we? Larry? Yes, we did. Okay, now here's the next thing you got to do. Take a big old pan, and I mean a, bi a big old pan. And uh, that thing is bubbling around, almost put my eye out. It says a 17 and a quarter by 11 and a half, two inch pan, and that's pretty near what you got right here. And you can either take butter and butter it up. I'm gonna take a little leftover Pamela. <laughs> Pam, some kind of, you can use any brand you want to, of course. No, oh, anyway. I wish you would. And, and oil it or grease it. And then the next thing you do is take all these apples, and just put them down in there just as you would a pan. I mean, a pie. And that's it for right now. Laban, Well, hit that's it. real good. All right, now to my cup of sugar, cup of flour, I add a cup of milk. So this recipe is real easy to remember. What are you Let me move at? this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And you mix this together into a smooth batter. And of course, Smooth if, Do batter. if Doris had been on top of things, I w would have had a whisk to use to make this, huh? Well, no, I'm Larry using the whisk, using it. but there you go. No, that's all right. I can use no, a spoon. I no, no, no. I'm going to use the spoon. I insist. I said I'm using the spoon. Well, rinse it off. Well, so much for that two days in Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we had a great time except that one period on Friday night where we were in the cab and the cab driver got lost. <laughs> It was a cab nightmare, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We knew where our parking lot was, but he didn't. We could see it, but we couldn't get we couldn't to get it. There. It was only like if, Abraham only looking in over at Washington, D.C. Can you say, land. well, it's over across I-66 <laughs> over there. See that one over there? Well, that's it. And he couldn't get to it <laughs> for 45 minutes. minutes. We drove around, and the meter was running. The whole time. Forty-some dollars People of us. Washington, learn your streets. <laughs> uh, just... <laughs> Woo. It was it was right much of a scream. Now listen, I need to do a couple of things when All you right, get a little go chance ahead. there. Go ahead. This recipe goes on so long, I'm afraid if I don't hustle along, I'm not going to get it done. Take five eggs, break them, and beat them all up. So that's what we're going to do right now, five eggs. Now that to be a, is one. Oh. Oh, what a lovely mess. <laughs> Excuse me. Doris, I'm glad you're enjoying this so much. <laughs> Listen to her. She's just fairly cackling over there. I think that you laid these eggs. 
Ooh, sounds right hot, Mr. Johnson. It now, is, take these eggs and, and beat them up. Take these eggs and, and beat, beat them. them. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an old Johnny Paycheck song. <laughs> beat those up. <laughs> so anyway, all right, that's all I do for right now, leave it. What'd you just do? Oh, all right, now here's my little aluminum pan, and I brought aluminum pan because I know very well that as soon as this show is over, the crew is gonna descend upon these, and I didn't wanna have one of my nice fine dishes. Doris gave me a lovely one, crystal one for uh, Christmas uh, like this, but I didn't want to bring it because I knew they would break it with their big ugly fangs and their paws grabbing at them and everything. So anyway, here is your stick of margarine melted in the pan. You just warm up the oven because it's got to bake at 350 degrees. Put your pan in there, let it melt, and then you're going to add to it this mixture out of the bowl with the cup of sugar, a cup of flour, and a cup of, cup of milk. All right, there we go. All right, that's all added in. Now we got a can of peaches. You remember peaches? She was a wonderful woman. Used to twirl those things? Oh, well, oh, yeah, that's, that, well, she, yeah. she, you know. Peaches was a great lady in many respects. <laughs> I'm never all right, gonna get now, this. without dumping, without draining them, you pour the peaches right on in there. And then you kind of arrange them around a little bit. <laughs> and then you well, put I'll it save in the, the last of You it. put it in the oven and bake it for a half an hour and that's all you do. And that's you're finished? It. I'm finished. Let's, why don't you do your, about, why don't you do your recipe? All right, the recipe is one cup of sugar, one I've cup of flour, one cup of milk, one stick of margarine, and a large can of peaches. And that's it. It's the old one, 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 one yeah. recipe. Oh, right. while we're goofing no, around, you well, want Hang to on, I gotta do something here. I got a lot to do. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta make a mixture of a cup of sugar, some flour, and some cinnamon. So the next thing we do is eight uh, tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This makes an awful lot of stuff. That wasn't what I did yesterday. And a cup of cinnamon sugar, which I've already pre-mixed. I have this great big thing of cinnamon. And I just mixed it up with a nice thing of, wasn't that what it says? Cinnamon to taste. Oh my, it's already a mess. What has he done now? Put that in there, mix it all up. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's go to the cook sisters while I find myself. <laughs> I'm totally lost. I can't figure out what I'm doing. Let's go to the Cook Sisters. Got All right, the Cook Sisters here they come, come trippingly down the hall with their canes, their rockers, and their assorted attendants. Hey, sister. Yeah? Uh, looks like you need to wash your hands. You know, you should wash your hands every time you handle raw meat. Oh, right. Now you should. The germs just hate it when you do that, and it just washes them right down the drain. Oh, no, now we'll get the germ people on oh, us. Oh, I know. The germ fanatics are everywhere. They are. Ah. I'm Sister Cook. I'm Tootsie Cookie. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook sisters. sisters. I did it right, you And it's gorgeous. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Doris and I are having just a tinge of a little argument here. Okay, you know, you take that uh, flour and cinnamon and sugar, and the next thing you do is... If you want to see the real recipe, folks, <laughs> it'll be in the cookbook. <laughs> you take that and put it over top of there, just like that, all pre-mixed and everything like that, okay? And if you want just a little bit of extra cinnamon, just do that, okay? There you go with that. Now, the next thing we do is we take uh, the five eggs, that had been lightly beaten. Lightly beaten. Including in the one that was dropped on the floor. It was not dropped on the floor, <laughs> Mr. Johnson. And the sticks of margarine. Put that in there. 
and what else goes in there? Five eggs beaten. Two and a half cups of flour goes in there. All right, two and a half cups of flour. I told you this took a while, but that's all right. We'll get there. One. Two. And a one half goes in there. And a little bit of salt. Do you have some salt over there? Do we have some salt? Do we have... May I have your attention, please? Is there any salt on the set? Doris, is there any? Oh, she's getting, okay, thank you very much. A little bit of salt goes on here at this time. Try and keep up with me, Jim. And that goes there. Next, we have, that's it. Okay, now we're gonna mix this up, and while we mix this up, I'm going to give you my recipe. Okay, here we go. And it calls for 12 large apples. Granny Smith's are preferred, a cup of sugar, Eight tablespoons of flour, some in the taste. That's the initial stuff that goes in there. <laughs> Stop it. The topping is two and a third stick of butter and margarine. I'm in big trouble. Two and a half cups of sugar, five eggs beaten, two and a half cups of flour, half teaspoon of salt, which I just added, and then a little more cinnamon sugar, which we will pile on top. And that's the recipe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, showing that I'm ambidextrous, <laughs> we're going to bring in the very lovely Doris Ford. I need to have the official, I need to reset this for the official Doris alarm. <laughs> All right. How you doing, Doris? I'm doing I almost fine. killed that for you today, too, didn't I? <laughs> I accidentally put her, her, her stuff on broil. <laughs> That's okay. It, it, it needed to be nice and brown. <laughs> well, it certainly is. <laughs> okay, I had to do a, um, find my spot now, holiday apple cobbler. And it was sent in by Pamela Ma Would you? Maynor, you. Maynor at, at age 15 from Gordonsville, Virginia. And you take uh, one cup of sugar, a half to three-fourths teaspoons of ground, um, how do you say it, card cardamom? Cardamom. And boy, that is expensive. Woo! So it says if desired, uh, if you don't, unless you have it at home, I'm, I think maybe I'd leave it out, or you could put maybe a little cinnamon or something or in mace. its place, well, mace in its place. Mm -hmm. Um, one tablespoon of corn well, starch. you're a poet and don't know it. <laughs> I didn't even know what I said. <laughs> five Mason cups of sliced. Oh, excuse me. Oh. oh. <laughs> five <laughs> cups of sliced Doris hot apples. Doris is beginning to cry, folks. She's amazing. <laughs> and one cup of cranberries. And if you want to make this other, uh, this is uh, the end of February here, and you know such animals, cranberries. But luckily, I freeze them. I got a dirty old man here breathing in my ear. <laughs> Huh. Move it along, Doris. I have things to do. Get yep, to it. <laughs> and some hunger jack biscuits. And you take <laughs> and you take this and you cook it in, uh, on the stove. You cook your uh, your cranberries, apples, uh, your your sugar, and whatever on top of the stove till they're almost done. Put them in the oven. Put the biscuits on top with some sugar, the rest of the sugar on it, and bake it. And it, I think it's going to turn out pretty good now that you've heated it up real good. No. <laughs> See, and underneath here, if I can get it out. Now, you're going to tell us everything that's in it? I she tried. <laughs> <laughs> I just moved that over. See, this is, this is your filling. Ooh, that and looks good. And it looks good. pretty. It's cram the cranberry and the apple, and it all goes together. So it would be good for the holidays or any time. Well, like I say, I froze the cranberry, so luckily we had some for today. Good. Because there's none around. Okay, you're done? <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to say? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for her. Okay, now you can see that when you make this mess, that, uh, <laughs> that it makes a very, very thick batter, a very thick batter. And so now what you do, and, and you actually, if it gets, sometimes it can get even thicker than that, and it says just sort of drop it in drops, although I have a tendency to make it a little bit thinner than they do. And the next thing you do now is you just distribute this batter over top of the apples with that cinnamon sugar on it, and try and sort of smooth it out as best you can. It's going to distribute underneath the uh, 350 degrees or whatever for about an hour and 15 minutes it has to go. And I tell you what, this is, it's a, a long recipe, but I will tell you it is, it appears to be a simply, stunningly delicious recipe. So there you see that. Oh, now that also, gorgeous. what you do, 
is at this point take just a little more of the cinnamon sugar or just the cinnamon itself and just kind of sprinkle it over the top however much you'd like just enough to make it real pretty just that would make a nice glaze to it you <laughs> and know there you what go. the what? lovely doris yes who never makes a mistake never uh oh she left the cream out she, you pour cream over it after you take it out of the oven uh oh so, <laughs> Doris alarm. When you're serving it. Yeah, when you're serving it. Is that it. so? So uh, well, I, I'm taking care of that right now. Well, now I want to show them what this looks like okay. when it comes out of the oven. This is a very, very pretty recipe. Ooh, it is. And look at that. You could feed the whole neighborhood on that. Well, I, I'm glad we're not live right this very second because your neighborhood would show up. Well, you're, you're the only person I know that would have two things that size. I know. That is true. And I have, I have yet another one. Now, this one's Doris, oh. the one I use today. Uh, but this one is mine, and I also have another one at, at least that large at home. Well, Do we lovely. have a serving spoon for this? Oh, uh, we can use this. All righty. Oh, here, Doris is Doris one. is right well, let me get on over there. the spot here, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Let's go to those Cook sisters. Oh, we've done that. Oh, we've oh, done okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Laban. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to my place. Well, look at this beautiful floral tribute. Now, what are these real? Of course they are. Look at this. What are those? <laughs> I've got hung up on my mic cord. What are they? <laughs> Zinnias? Are they? No, no, no. They're Transvaal daisies. They're what? That's correct. They're Transvaal from South Africa daisies. Transvaal. Well, how do you know stuff like this, Mr. Johnson? Well, like I've said many times, I just wish I could uh, rearrange my hard disk so I didn't know all the stuff I do. Let me get you some of Doris's. I've already got it. It's in the bowl. That's, already served. Oh. <laughs> well, let me get you. You try some to help him, and he just. Well, that's the greatest of plenty. Which one should I try first? It's I so know. exciting, I just can't tell. Uh, I'll try, uh, I'll try yours. I'll try yours. Well, I know what yours tastes like because this is the same recipe uh, I make all the time at home. Mm. Mm. We've already used it. Doris, Doris is standing is over on the side, the side. She thinks we to, don't know how to use a to pitcher. To use the uh, cream on her. Well, I'm going to see what... Mm -hmm. Let me see what Doris's is like here. You know what? It tastes like a big old glob of cherry with a big old Hungry Jack biscuit next to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It really is delicious. Yep. It's the best biscuit I've ever had <laughs> out of a can. And you know, I think that by my putting it under the broiler accidentally for five minutes helped it a great deal. Well, it put that hard glaze mm -hmm. on to it. A nice glaze. Mm. Well, let me try mine. What do you think of mine, Mr. Johnson? Well, as I previously said, I thought it was real good. Oh. <laughs> you know, I think... You are distracted today. I have been totally distracted by the day. Mmm. This is a great recipe. You know it's worth all the trouble I had to go through to do it. Mm -hmm. And I did do it right, by the way. You all scoffed at me and made fun of me and light of me, but... I well, think I've come up with it. we don't, who will? <laughs> Half the civilized world. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, mm -hmm. it is good. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, and that's my own homemade cinnamon. You too can make cinnamon at home. You know what you do? Just mix it with a little sugar. Cinnamon and sugar. Mix it up. Mm -hmm. However strong you'd like for it to be. And that's cinnamon sugar. You don't even have to go out and buy it or anything. And I think this recipe would be fun using those new peaches that, that are spiced. You know, you can get spice peaches and raspberry flavored peaches. Look how pretty that. That is such a, you know, you've mm -hmm. just done that perfectly. Okay, guys, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to kill time over there. <laughs> Come over here, Doris. Come over here with your thing here. Come here. <laughs> Doris is now playing. No, no, no. You were doing a great. <laughs> get it back up and play with it some more, Doris. Come on in here. Come on. <laughs> Doris was yelling at us on, on speakerphone. What do you have? To, how much time do we have, Doris? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. I know that, Doris. How much time do we have, Doris? We have fifteen more seconds. Oh, uh, uh, 
Doris. <laughs> well, it's what she does to Harold at home. I know. I just know it. Bye. Bye.